The electrochemical cell has a lot of terminology. You're going to need to know all the terms. They're really good for multiple choice questions. So an electrochemical cell is a system consisting of electrodes that dip into an electrolyte and in which a chemical reaction either uses or generates an electric current. A voltaic, also known as a galvanic cell, is an electrochemical cell in which a spontaneous reaction generates an electric current. An electrolytic cell is a chemical electrochemical cell in which an electric current drives an otherwise non-spontaneous reaction. A half cell is the portion of an electrochemical cell in which a half reaction takes place. A salt bridge is a tube of an electrolyte in a gel that is connected to the two half cells of a voltaic cell. It allows the flow of ions, but prevents the mixing of the different solutions that would allow direct reaction of the cell reactants. An anode is the electrode at which oxidation occurs. So it gives off electrons. A cathode is the electro electrode at which reduction occurs. So it receives electrons. The cell voltage is the reading in volts that measures the difference in electrical potential between the anode and the cathode, also known as the electromotive force, also known as the cell potential. Okay, so here's the question. This whole problem is one problem. A voltaic cell is constructed from a half cell in which a cadmium rod dips into a solution of cadmium to nitrate and another half cell in which a silver rod dips into a solution of silver nitrate. The two half cells are connected by a salt bridge. Silver ion is reduced during the operation of the voltaic cell. Draw a sketch of the cell, label the anode cathode, show the corresponding half reactions at these electrodes, indicate the electron flow in the external circuit, the signs of the electrodes, and the direction of cation migration in the half cells. And FYI, I have given this as a question on the final. Okay, so here's our cadmium going to cadmium plus two, plus two electrons, it's the anode. There's our silver ion plus electron going to silver solid, that's our cathode. So the cadmium gives off electrons, the silver accepts the electrons. The electrons flow from the cadmium to the silver. So here's what it would look like. You would draw a beaker and a beaker. You would draw your salt bridge and then there's cotton plugs here. The salt bridge typically has sodium chloride, potassium chloride in it. And then here was our cadmium half reaction. So we're giving off electrons. We have a voltmeter to measure the volts. Here was our silver half reaction. So we're making silver. So the electrons are going this way. So the cadmium is becoming cadmium ion, so you're losing this. This electrode would get smaller. The silver ion is gaining electron and going to silver, so you would have some deposit of silver here. So this electrode would be getting larger.
Okay, so let's look at notation for voltaic cells. You put the anode and then two lines and then the cathode. This is the shorthand notation. So the question is asking you to write the shorthand notation for the voltaic cell that you previously sketched. So here's the anode, here's our salt bridge, and here's the cathode. So now you're given the shorthand notation and you're asked to write out the half reactions and the cell reaction. So we start with our anode. We have to multiply by two so the electrons are the same. So we've got our solid going to ion plus electrons. And then we write out our cathode. So that's our 10 plus two gaining two electrons going to 10 solid. We multiply and then add up our reactions. And then this is our cell reaction. So to fully specify a reaction in a voltaic cell it is necessary to give concentrations and pressures. So for example, if you had an aqueous solution, you would put the value of the molarity. And again, for an aqueous solution, you put the value of the molarity. So the notation for a hydrogen electrode is hydrogen ion, which is aqueous, going to hydrogen gas, and you have to use platinum. That's why those electrodes are so expensive that you guys are breaking. Okay, we're gonna look at electromotive force. And first we're gonna look at work. Work is needed to move electrons in a wire. An, electric, an electric charge moves from a point of high electric potential, consider that high electric pressure, to a point of low electric potential. So think of that as low electric pressure. Think of it as similar to water pressure. So the difference in the electric potential in other words, electric pressure is called potential difference and it's measured in volts. We use the letter uppercase V. Electric work, electrical work is equal to charge times potential difference. So if we look at our corresponding units, electrical work is given in joules, charge is given in coulombs. Potential difference is given in volts. The magnitude of the charge on one mole of electrons, 96,500 coulombs is called the Faraday constant. This should be on your cheat sheet. It's named in honor of Michael Faraday. You don't need to know the dates. He was English and he did a lot of other experiments, like the electric motor. Okay, so we've got, whoa, too, sorry, too far. We've got work equals minus F times potential difference. And keep in mind it's a minus because the voltaic cell loses energy as it does work on the surroundings. The electromotive, electromotive force is a degree of EMF or E of cell. The EMF is the maximum potential difference between the electrodes of a voltaic cell. So our work maximum equals minus N 
F, which was this part, and then E of cell, that's our potential difference. So here's our new equation. Where N is the number of electrons transferred in the overall cell equation. So let's look at a problem. We're given our shorthand notation and we're asked to calculate the maximum electrical work and we have five grams of hydrogen gas. So let's start by drawing our, writing out our half reactions. So here's our mercury one plus two electrons goes to two mercury liquid. Here's our hydrogen gas going to hydrogen ion plus two electrons. So therefore our N equals two. Then we're going to plug this into our equation. Our equation is W max equals minus N F E of cell. So W max equals minus two because we have two electrons. This is our Faraday constant. The E of cell was given in the problem. So you have to remember that one Coulomb times volt equals a joule. So our answer as far as units is a minus, or not our fine, we're not there yet, but almost, minus 1.25 times 10 to the five joules. And then we're gonna get our answer because that's joules per one mole of hydrogen gas. It's 2.02 grams per one mole, multiply it by the five grams we've got. And then we get our final answer. The moles cancel, the grams cancel, we have joules. Okay, we're gonna look at standard cell EMFs and standard electric electrode potentials. A cell EMF is a measure of the driving force of the cell reaction. The cell EMF depends on the ability of the oxidation half reactions to lose electrons and the ability of the reduction half reactions to gain electrons. So the E of cell equals the oxidation potential plus the reduction potential. A reduction potential is a measure of the tendency for an oxidized species to gain electrons in the reduction half reaction. In other words, the ability of a species to act as an oxidizing agent. The electrode potential is an intensity property independent of the amount of species in the reaction. Our standard EMF, we use that little zero superscript, is the EMF, EMF under standard state conditions. Standard state conditions are one molar, one atmosphere, 25 degrees C. So our standard electrode potential is the electrode, electrode potential of the standard state conditions. Okay, we're gonna look at strengths of oxidizing agents and reducing agents. So on table 18.1 in your beloved Chang, the strongest oxidizing agent is F2. F2 really wants to gain electrons to become fluoride ion. So a plus 2.87 is considered a very high number. So F2 is a very strong oxidizing agent. The best oxidizing agents are easily reduced. So the strongest reducing agent is lithium. So on your table, the substances to the right of the arrows are the reducing agents. 
the best reducing agents are those found at the bottom of the table. So if we have lithium solid going to lithium ion plus electrons, oxidation is lost, therefore it's being a reducing agent. Okay, so now we have a question. Order the following oxidizing agents by increasing strength. We've got chlorine gas, aqueous hydrogen peroxide, and aqueous ferric ion. We need to find them in the table. So you're going to write the oxygen half reaction and include the volts. And the higher the volts, the stronger the oxidizing agent. So here's the half reaction. Chlorine gas plus two electrons goes to two chloride solution and it's a positive 1.36 volts. We've got hydrogen peroxide solution plus two hydrogen solution plus two electrons goes to two water, and it's a positive 1.77 volts. That's a V for volts. And then we have iron plus two plus two, one electron going to iron plus two. Wait a minute, that should be a three. Oh, son of a, I thought I got everything right. Let me fix So that should be iron plus three. Okay, so we're just gonna go by the numbers. So the lowest number is the weakest. So we go from iron to chlorine to peroxide to the strongest oxidizing agent has the highest number which is the 1.77, so that's all you do. Lowest to highest, as far as the volts. Okay, so now we're gonna order the following reducing agents by increasing strength, hydrogen gas, aluminum solid, copper solid. So you're gonna have to reverse the half reactions and change the sign of the volts when you do that. We've got hydrogen gas going to 2H plus, plus two electrons, it's zero volts. Aluminum solid going to aluminum plus three, plus three electrons, it's 1.66 volts. And then copper solid going to copper ion plus two electrons, it's minus 0.34 volts. So this is our lowest number. So we go here and then we just use the numbers. So copper, hydrogen, aluminum, aluminum. Aluminum is your strongest reducing agent. Okay, we're gonna calculate C cell EMFs from standard potentials. So you're asked to calculate it. This is how I like to do these problems. Your book does it differently. There are so many different ways to do it, but I'm just gonna teach you this one way. So I'm gonna start with my cadmium solid going to cadmium plus two plus two electrons. It's a minus 0 0.40 volts. That's my oxidation is lost. This is my anode. Then I'm gonna have two silver ions plus two electrons goes to two silver solid and it's at 0 0.80 volts. It's gaining electrons, so that's my cathode. So now all I do is add up my half reactions and add my volts and I'm done. So here's my half reactions I add up. Here's my volts I add up. And then here's my final answer. So when you set it up this way, all you do is add the volts together and you're done. However, you have to manipulate the half reaction so you can get the highest overall, which I spelled highest wrong, volts. That's embarrassing. 
You want the highest positive volts. Okay, now we're gonna look at free energy. So our delta G of formation is the maximum energy available to do useful work. It is possible to obtain maximum work from some reactions, for example, batteries. And so we're gonna look at something called coupled reactions. So here's our reaction. It has a delta G of positive 1487 kilojoules. And here's our reaction of the carbon and a minus one, five, four, three kilojoules. And so when we add them up, we get a minus 56 kilojoules. So this is energy given off. So this is just a refresher course for you about how you could get delta G. So you need to remember about delta G because now what we're gonna do with delta G is we're gonna take the delta G and look at free energy. So if we look at free energy and equilibrium constants, we can look at the free energy and relate to the equilibrium constant. The thermodynamic equilibrium constant is called K. It's the equilibrium constant in which the concentration of gases are expressed in partial pressures and atmospheres, whereas the concentrations of solids and liquid solutions are expressed in molarities. So this is just a practice for you about how to write the K. So if we have ammonia plus carbon dioxide going to urea plus water, we would put the urea over the partial pressures of each. So you still need to remember about how to write a K expression. If you had silver chloride, you need to remember that a silver solid goes to aqueous silver ion and chloride ion. So this would be your K for this situation. So you guys are still gonna have to know how to do K expressions. Okay, so now we have a question, calculate the standard EMF for the following at 25 degrees C from standard free energies of formation. So our delta G values would be given in the back of the book in an appendix. So we write our expression, our equation. We put the delta G underneath each. And then we have to remember how to calculate delta G. That was products minus reactants. So we had one mole of the zinc. We had two moles of the chloride. So here's our products. And then minus our reactants. And so now we have the delta G for this reaction. So if we look at the half reactions, these are our half reactions. Our zinc goes to zinc plus two plus two electrons. Our chlorine gas plus our two electrons goes to two chlorides. Now what we can do is use our equation, delta G equals minus NFE of cell. So our N was two. This is our Faraday's constant. So we're gonna use the delta G that we calculated above and put that in here. So now we have our one equation, one unknown. We can calculate our E of cell. Okay, 
Okay, so we have some more equations. This is relating our ESL at standard state to K. So NF ESL equals RT natural log of K, where our N is the moles, the moles of electrons. So if we rearrange this equation and divide both sides by NF, we would get E of cell equals RT over NF natural log of K. Or if you want to use regular log, it'd be 2.303 RT over NF is log of K. You can use either one of these. So the N is the number of moles of the electrons. The F is the Faraday's constant. So the Faraday's constant is a constant. The R is a constant. If you have this at 25 degrees C, you can simplify this. So you can use this at 25 degrees C, that the E of cell equals point, it 0 0.059 log K over N. And again, use this at 25 degrees C. So we're given a question. The standard EMF for the following voltaic cell is 1.10 volts. Calculate the equilibrium constant for the corresponding reaction. So this is the shorthand notation. So notice it went from zinc zero to plus two. So I already figured out in my head that I must be two electrons. So here's my E of cell. Here's my two electrons, log of K. So you can now solve for K. In other words, if you're given the E of cell and it's 25 degrees C, you can solve for the thermodynamic equilibrium constant. So we're gonna look at the dependence of the EMF on concentration now. This is the famous Nernst equation. So our delta G equals the delta G at the standard state plus RT log of Q. And our delta G was minus NFE of cell. So our delta G at the standard state is minus NFE of cell at the standard state. So this is all the standard state. So if this is our standard state, so that we put that here, this was our E of cell at non-standard state and delta G at non-standard state. So we take all of this and put that here to get this expression. And then we can simplify because the RT over F, if this is 25 degrees C, is 0 0.0592. So now we have the setup where we can solve for Q. So we have a question. We're given the cell notation. We're given the concentrations. So this would be our reaction, cadmium solid plus two hydrogens. There should be a hydrogen in there. I got cut out. In equilibrium with cadmium plus two plus H2 gas. So here's our Q. Cadmium on the top, partial pressure because it's a gas. And then hydrogen ion on the bottom. We put in our values. So the hydrogen ion was one molar. The partial pressure of the gas was one atmosphere. We're not going to bother with units. And then our, our cadmium, oh, I guess that was okay. And our Cadmium was 0 0.01. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're saying this is our Q. This is just practice like how to get Q. Okay, so now we have a question, what is the EMF of the following cell? So we have the cell notation and we're given the EMF of the cell is 1.10 volts. So using our cell notation, we should be able to write out the reaction. So here's our reaction, zinc, solid, copper, solution, zinc, plus two, copper, solid. So that's all from this cell notation.
So our Q, we look at this to get our Q. So our Q is zinc over copper. We just ignore the solids. So the zinc was 1.00 times 10 to the minus five. The copper ion was 0.1. So we can solve for Q. The E of cell was given, that's the 1.10 minus 0 0.0592 over two. The two was the number of electrons. Zinc went from zero to plus two. And then log of our Q. So we do that and we get our E of cell under these conditions. So we're given another question, what's the potential of the zinc electrode in the following voltaic cell? It's 25 degrees C. We're given the partial pressure of the hydrogen, the molarity of the zinc, and the molarity of the zinc solution. So here's our half reactions. So hydrogen, which is a gas, goes to hydrogen ion, which is a Q, plus two electrons, and we get zero volts. That should have been a gas. And then this hydrogen ion was AQ. So that was aqueous. And then our zinc is AQ plus two electrons goes to zinc solid. It's a minus 0.76 volts. So all I do is I add up the volts. So that's my E of cell. So the Q is products over reactants. So I put in my values and I get a Q of 10. So then I just plug it into my equation. So I'm looking for the E of cell under these new conditions. I use the E of cell of the standard state, which was given in the problem, minus 0 0.059 over N log of Q. So my N was two, because I had two electrons. My Q was 10. So now my new E of cell under these different conditions from standard state is a minus 0.7696. So it changed just a little bit. And that was because the molarity changed. Okay, so now we have a question, what is the pH of the following? We're given the cell notation. We're given the E of cell. So first we're gonna write out the half reaction. So it's zinc solid going to zinc solution plus two electrons, that was our 0 0.76 volts. Hydrogen ion plus two electrons going to hydrogen gas, that was zero volts. So if we looked at how to set up our Q, our Q would be our products, which would be our zinc ion and partial pressure of the hydrogen gas, those are our products, over our reactants, which was hydrogen ion, and we use the coefficient as a, a superscript. So this would be how we would set the Q for this particular reaction. And then if we put in what we have as far as the problem, we had one molar, one atmosphere, but we don't know the hydrogen ion concentration. So if you can determine the value of Q, you'll be able to use it to find the hydrogen ion concentration and then the pH. So our expression is E of cell equals E of cell at the standard state minus 0 0.0592 over two because we had two electrons log of Q.
So the E of cell was 0 0.60 volts. The E of cell at the standard state was 0.76 volts over point equals 0 0.0592 over two log of Q. So we do all of that and we can solve for Q. And then once we get that, we can plug it into our Q expression and solve for a hydrogen ion. Once we get our hydrogen ion, we can solve for pH. And that would be a good place to stop.